Arirang Prime. The ninth composite group could see flowers in the gardens below. The movie I'm watching was made in 2008. It's a joint production between Korea, Japan, and China, produced by a Chinese director. Entitled Yasukuni, this documentary introduces the Japanese Shinto shrine by that name that has become so closely associated with Japanese imperialism. Although the remarkable film won an award at an international competition, and rave reviews, it was subsequently banned in Japan. Only after a rather torturous process was it finally released for a premiere of just a few days. These pictures taken in 2012 show a series of anti-Japanese demonstrations held in places like China, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. As reported by the media, the situation became quite serious. And, although their numbers are small, there are those in Japan who continue to hold anti-Korean and anti-Chinese demonstrations. As far as I can tell, there is really no hostility between the great majority of citizens of these three countries. But then, if historical issues are raised, the situation can alter rather quickly. Unresolved historical issues can lead to cultural exchanges being sadly broken off. In reality, the historical issues that separate the three nations are tangled and complex. Is there no way to untangle this tangled web of history? Let us try to trace the historical strands back into the past and see what we can uncover there. A group of Korean students are visiting Kyoto, Japan. They are here to participate in the six-day Korea-China-Japan Youth History Camp. The Japanese students greet the Korean and Chinese teams with open arms. The camp meets its 12th anniversary this year. The three countries take turns hosting the camp, and this year it kicked off in Japan under the theme, Peace. The future of 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 the
、えー、過去にいろんな被害加害の関係があるわけですけどもそういう平和のためにいろんな人たちが手を結び努力してきたそのことをお互い見つめてみようそのことによって未来を開く力をお互いに学びたい。Today, the participants enjoy the convivial atmosphere. Tomorrow, there will be a field trip to historic sites. Their first destination is the Oeyama nickel mine. This is where countless forced laborers were made to work from 1943 until the end of the war. A Japanese civil group that helps Chinese victims and their surviving families erected a friendship monument here. The forced laborers from China had no way of voicing their rights until the Japanese civil group stepped in. With their help, they've been fighting in court since 1998. This field trip is focused on the activities launched by Japan's civil groups to help the victims. This Ukishima Maru Memorial Park was also built by a civil group. Ukishima Maru was a passenger ship carrying the Korean laborers back home after the war when it was sunk at the port of Maizuru, Kyoto. It's an incident that's being probed for truth. The youth of the three nations hear the tragic history of the forced laborers and see with their own eyes that there are individuals in Japan who are striving to bring the truth to light. This will help melt away any prejudices they might have against one another. However, these efforts are less than adequate to resolve the historical conflicts tying the three nations. What's regrettable is that many victims are passing away while the truth lies buried in the dark. The Utoro village was built to house some 1,300 Korean laborers who were drafted against their will to construct a military airfield. The village was neglected after the war, and its residents almost lost what little they had when one company tried to sell the land. Thankfully, this crisis was averted with the help of Korea and the residents of Kyoto. Most of the first generation laborers in the village have passed away. Currently, the 89 year old Kang Gyang Nam, the oldest resident, guards the village. After the war ended, Japan turned its back on its Joseon residents. Even in the case of the Utoro village, the Japanese public only voiced their concerns after the land issue came out. With her husband gone, all Ms. Kang has left are the vestiges of the weary days gone by. 
이때 더 예쁜데. <웃음> 아, 캔코드요 살다가, 아. 만 건강하게 사다가, 아. 죽을 때는 술을 죽으면, 소리지, 그러면 되지. 눈이 나 장가 보내줘야, 까마귀 깐치 울고, 호박꽃 피는 내 고향에, Although she has no wish to return to her homeland, she hums its unforgettable melody to soothe her pain. The forced labor took place more than half a century ago. It is, however, still an ongoing case. Li Liangji, an 84-year-old Chinese, was just 14 when he was dragged to a mine in Fukuoka, Japan. <laughs> Having married off all their children, the old couple lead lonely lives, scarred by past memories. Although some 70 years have gone by, the agonies of the past are still as vivid as ever. In China, about 200,000 family members of the forced laborers are pushing Japan to apologize and make compensations. Hearing Japan's apology is Mr. Lee's lifelong dream, a dream that he may never see come true in his lifetime. The bitter history of the three countries began with the onset of modernization. Japan opened its doors in the mid-19th century under the influence of Commodore Perry. With the Meiji Restoration, Japan became the first among the three nations to achieve modernization and established an emperor-centered national state. It was from this period that it began pursuing national prosperity and military power to become the strongest in Asia. And through its forced annexation of the Korean Peninsula in 1910, Japan laid the groundwork for its invasion of China. After engineering the Mukden incident, it attacked Beijing and set off the Sino-Japanese War. Then in 1945, after the Pacific War, Japan declared unconditional surrender to the Allied forces and brought its history of invasions to an end. Shiso 
進んでいったんだと考えています。The efforts of the Western powers to force the nations of East Asia to open their ports must be seen in the context of the dominance of imperialism in the West as a political and economic theory for national progress. For the Western powers, imperialism and colonialism had become the basis for their conception of an international order, and there was a book on international law that was composed against that backdrop. That book was a summary of the contemporary international order that was introduced to these three Asian nations. This English book was entitled Elements of International Law with a sketch of the history of science. It was translated by an American missionary living in China. He translated it into literary Chinese, giving it the title Wang Guo Gongfa. That Chinese translation was transmitted in turn to Japan and to Korea, where it had wide ranging repercussions. Founded in 1862, Tongwen Guan was China's first foreign language school. It was here that the book Wan Guo Gong Fa was born in the hands of William Martin, an American missionary. The exact date of when the book was introduced in Joseon is unknown, but its widespread influence began in 1880. It was a time of chaos, with the orders of the East and the West clashing against each other. And this book shocked the scholars of Korea, China, and Japan, which coexisted in a tributary order. They were particularly impressed by the concept of sovereignty. Professor Kang Sang Gyu, who has been studying Wan Guo Gong Fa, asserts that the introduction of this book was a revolutionary event that symbolized the end of a China-centered order. In the case of Joseon, which was the last among the three nations to open its doors, there were severe conflicts between the Enlightenment and the conservative parties. The two debated fiercely over the book as well. King Gojong of Joseon was one of those who were fascinated by the concept of sovereignty. He even used this concept as the basis for his constitution of the Korean Empire. However, the sovereignty championed by the Western world was rooted in imperialism. Realizing this too late, Joseon lost its sovereign power. Europe 국가들 간에는 서로 주권 국가이고 서로 평등한 관계들을 이야기하고 고민했지만 유럽권 바깥으로 나가게 되면 제국의 모습으로 변신을 하게 됩니다. 결국 당시의 정치 세력들은 종합적으로 유럽에서 시작된 국제 질서의 정체 본질을 어, 충분히 이해하고 있지는 못했다. 일면들만을 보고 논쟁을 하게 되었다라고 하는 것을 생각해 볼 수가 있을 것 같습니다. Meanwhile, the preface written by Zhang Shigi, who partook in the translation of Wan Guo Gong Fa, shows that the Qing did everything it could to use the book to maintain its power.
things were different in Japan. Having expanded its knowledge by sending its people to study abroad, it quickly came to understand the double-sidedness of international law and even published books on it. This difference in perspective resulted in the conflict between the Qing and Japan over Joseon. Four battleships from the Qing, which were headed toward Joseon, were resting in the coastal waters of Pungdo Island. All of a sudden, the sound of gunfire shattered the silence of the sea. It was a surprise attack by Japan. One battleship fled to the west, one was run aground. And the remaining two were sunk by shells, and thus began the Sino-Japanese War without any declaration. In 1894, the Qing Empire sent its troops to Joseon upon the latter's request to suppress the Donghak peasant army. The Donghak peasant revolution was an armed uprising of the Donghak followers and peasants against feudalism and foreign powers. Japan also sent its troops, although Joseon had not made any request. Li Hongzhang was the leader of the self-strengthening movement, a modernization movement in the Qing dynasty. He strove to foster a navy in spite of the financial difficulties. And his efforts gave birth to the Beiyang Fleet in 1888, the first modern navy in the Qing dynasty. Hiroshima, Japan. This beautiful park is where the Imperial General Headquarters was located during the Sino-Japanese War. It was the most authoritative body under the direct command of the Japanese Emperor and controlled the army and the navy. Having set up the Imperial General Headquarters in Hiroshima, the Japanese army repaired the railroad that connected Tokyo to Hiroshima Station and Ujina Port. Opened in 1890, Ujina Port was a military port where battleships could be anchored. In other words, Japan was fully prepared to dispatch its troops to China. However, as soon as the Japanese army landed in Incheon, it headed toward Joseon's royal palace. It chose to gain control by force to justify its military actions in Joseon in the light of the international law. Professor Nakatsuka, who has been studying the Sino-Japanese war for several years, shows a document that contradicts the theory that the goal of the war was invading Joseon. これはね、なぜ面白いかというと、はい。その大きい線量のそういうことを書いたらダメだというこの大島健一という人がいたその提案をですね。
一番重要なところや。朝鮮の応急占領をしたということの、もうその。天末というか、その。全、全体をね。その詳しく変えたりして。誘拐に思ったりするのはけしからん、そういうことはやめたほう。そういうことは書く、書くと、その先生の消極と矛盾すると書いてあるでしょ、うん、だからもう、そういうことは書き改めて、もう、姿勢書かないようにしろという。そういう提案をした、この文書です。Japan's plan was to turn Joseon into its military base and use it as a foothold for invading China. And according to this plan, it drove the Qing soldiers out of Joseon and inched closer to China. Meanwhile, the Japanese Navy headed toward the Yellow Sea, where the Beiyang fleet had built up defense. During this naval battle, the Qing lost five battleships and suffered a crushing defeat. Then, together with the army, the Japanese battleship advanced toward the Liadong Peninsula and Wei Hai and brought its opponent to its knees. And thus, the East Asian order, fixed around the Qing, collapsed. The Qing War 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 是惨痛的，一系列的、一连串的噩梦，都是跟甲午战争密切相关的。日本이한국을노리는데전혀부담스럽지않게만든결정적인전환점이청일전쟁이었다。사실은청일전쟁이후에한국의식민지는식민지화는시간문제였다라고보시면됩니다。The staircase I am descending. Marks the division between the settlements of Qing China and Meiji Japan during the Enlightenment period here in Incheon, Korea. If we look at the buildings on both sides of the staircase, we can see that they are in the Chinese style on one side and a Japanese style on the other side, allowing us to imagine what it must have looked like at that time. Having humbled the other rival for influence in Korea, Japan would go on to annex Korea as a colony by force in 1910. At the time, Qing Dynasty Chinese, Meiji period Japanese, and ordinary Koreans lived together on both sides of this staircase as close neighbors. But the imperialists, who did not shrink From war, do not seem to have cared about the lives of ordinary people. Sadly, even after the end of the Second World War, on August 15, 1945, a series of political tragedies, combined with the coming of the Cold War, left those contradictions from the colonial period unresolved. Those wounds continue to fester, even down to the present day. The Korean, Chinese, and Japanese participants of the Kyoto History Camp visit Ritsumeikan University's Peace Museum. Ritsumeikan University is known as a progressive school within Japan. Although the main theme of the museum's exhibition is the aftermath of atomic bombing and the sufferings during the U.S. occupation, it also portrays Japan's atrocities in the modern era. In the past, this university used to serve as an incubator of student soldiers. After the war, however, It established its progressive academic tradition and has been calling for re-examination of the past. The students from the three nations continue their serious debate on the history and future of their countries. One topic that stands out during the debate is Japan's attitude toward history. 
日本の教科書っていうのは大概特に小学校教育とかとなると日本も中国とか韓国とかの被害についてちゃんと自分たちがした、うん、被害をちゃんと分かるような教育もした方がいいと思いました。If the Japanese government continues to defend its stance, the fundamental problems will remain unresolved no matter what peaceful efforts the Japanese people make. We met Li Ying, the Chinese director of the documentary Yasukuni that took eight years to complete. He decided to make the film after watching a documentary shown at a Nanjing memorial event held by Japan. This 我这个当时我对受到的那种刺激是可以说是真是巨大。我说一下子自己浑身发抖，我说就感觉到就是，好像一下子不知道怎么在在战场上一阵听到一阵机枪扫过来的一种那种声音一样。Commemorated in Yasukuni Shrine are 2.46 million souls who died in the Pacific War. Among them are the forced draftees. However, their families are demanding withdrawal from the shrine. But Japan has turned a deaf ear to their request. The Yasukuni shrine worship is tantamount to Japan's refusal to admit its wrongdoing during war. The doyen of the History Educationalist Conference of Japan, Mr. Ishiyama, points out that Japan's conservative stance is an ongoing problem that surfaced after the war. まあ、要するに戦時中に戦争を遂行してきた責任者のうちのまあ一部の人たちは戦犯とかっていうことでね、あの処刑されたりした人も中にはいますけれども、大部分はあの戦後の支配者として生き残ってきたと。だからそれで
According to the Korean chairperson of the Korea-China-Japan Joint History Textbook Committee, what's important is that the three nations have started talking about their historical issues. 1945년 이후부터 2001년 당시까지 무려 60여 년의 세월이 지났는데도 너네 주장이 뭐고 우리 주장은 이거다라는 거죠. 같은 테이블에서 이야기해 본 적이 없어요. 이 책은 그런 면에서 우리에게 당사자인 저 같은 사람에게도 야 만나니까 이야기가 되는구나 라는 최초의 사례를 보여줬죠. 사람들한테 아 가능하겠구나. The gap between their historical awareness was wider than expected. The committee members visited all three countries numerous times throughout the year, sometimes arguing and sometimes discoursing all night long. Because 동아시아사를 제대로 인식한다는 것은 바로 그런 상대에 대한 이해의 폭을 넓히는 거고 그건 바로 배타성을 해결하는 거죠. 서로 다름을 인정하는 과정에서 하나로 가려고 하는 노력이 나올 수 있는 거고 거기에서 배타성은 설 자리가 없는 것이죠. Amidst the efforts of the three nations to reach a consensus on historical awareness, Korea was the first to include East Asian history in its regular curriculum. <laughs> By being in the shoes of the other nations, students can broaden their perspectives and understanding. The histories of the three nations are tightly intertwined, and yet their memories of the past are all different. This summer, the Independence Hall of Korea is holding a special exhibition on Nishiki A. They are pictures that glorify the wars of the modern era. Perhaps it's only natural that Korea and China remember the war from the perspective of a victim. Teaching about historical truth is important, of course, but such different memories of the past will surely not be helpful in resolving the historical conflicts. Uh Sitting east of Weihai, China, is Liogong Island, which used to serve as the Beiyang Fleet's base. Considered as a must-visit place for Chinese people, the entire island is a museum that commemorates the Sino-Japanese War. The different memories of the Sino-Japanese War represent the selective memories of the three nations. China, whose commemoration of the war is by far the grandest, 
heightens its public's patriotic spirit, emphasizing that the shameful past should not be forgotten and instead be used as a lesson. Inside the museum, everything from the war has been restored or kept in its original state. China has retrieved and displayed the remains of vessels and weapons that had sunk to the bottom of the sea during the battle. The main cannon of the ship Ji Yuan, which was seized by Japan during the war, can also be observed here. The main purpose of China's commemoration of the Sino-Japanese War is education. Diverse educational programs are offered here for different groups, from young children to soldiers. Visited by some 200,000 students every year, the museum has even earned the title National Patriotic Education Base from the government. This is Cheng Shan Tu, which sits on the easternmost tip of China. The last battle of the Sino Japanese War, the Battle of Weihai, took place in these coastal waters. Numerous historic figures have also visited this place. The passage left behind by Hu Yaobang, the former general secretary of the Communist Party, is an example of heightening patriotism at a historic landmark. By a roadside in Hiroshima stands a simple peace tower. It was originally built as a triumphal monument to celebrate Japan's victory in the Sino Japanese War. However, not many people remember the history of the tower. Despite its scars of atomic bombing, Hiroshima today is a city of peace. Once the home of the Imperial General Headquarters, the city used to sing of the glories of imperialism. However, the history of invasions has been buried under the memories of pain and celebrations of peace. A ferocious battlefield during the Sino-Japanese War 
Korea does not commemorate any part of the event. It was a war waged for the control of Joseon, but not many people remember it. Most of the triumphal monuments that the Japanese soldiers erected had been removed, for they were seen as symbols of disgrace. And yet, here is an individual who pays visits to the war historic sites, even in pouring rain. Professor Shin Young Woo emphasizes that the Sino Japanese War is part of Korea's history. Since countless people of Joseon were sacrificed as well. The 19th century, marked by the Sino Japanese War, was a decisive period that changed the fates of Korea, China, and Japan. Perhaps the first step to resolving their historical conflicts is to share awareness and memories of that period. Recently, there have been proposals to bring together the Sino-Japanese war relics of the three countries. It's an attempt to share the memories of both the perpetrators and the victims and build a basis for historical reconciliation. Of course, for that to happen, something has to be done first. あるいは想像する行為、そのものを特に加害者側が重視をして、そのことをきちっとやっていくってことが非常に重要だと思ってます。On the last day of the youth history camp, Professor Komori Yoichi of Tokyo Graduate School gave a lecture on history, territorial issues, and peace in Asia. During the long Q&A session, the students expressed much interest in the current agenda, such as territorial disputes and improper remarks by Japanese politicians, and the professor answered every question with equal zeal. え、今日聞いていたその若者たちも彼ら真剣に考えてくれていたと思います。それからまた今日は私はその日本における政治家の歴史認識がどうしてこれだけ歪んでいるのかということを中心に話したわけですけれども、そのことも聞きっとあの
the young communicate easily. If we look back at the long history of Korea, China, and Japan, the periods of communication were longer than those of isolation. It's time for the three countries to think long and hard about what kind of history they want to pass down to these future leaders. Korea, China, and Japan all have the saying, next door neighbors are better than distant relatives. These three nations in geographical proximity have had constant cultural exchange for several thousand years and also experienced the pains of war together. These three countries, Korea, China, and Japan, could be the very best of neighbors. We cannot allow just certain select memories to turn into history, to record only that part of history that fits a nation's convenience is a terrible practice from the past we must cast off. There is a road to reconciliation that can move us beyond the history of alienation and distance. Korea, China, and Japan are in a turmoil of intensifying territorial disputes. It's time to leave behind the century of conflicts and think about the upcoming century of cooperation. We dream of a unified community made up of Korea, China, and Japan. <laughs>